Hi everyone, it's Lauren and welcome to the first video in my series on how to start a booktube channel. Eventually there will be a playlist of all of the videos in this series linked up in the corner here and in the description box below. I'm going to try and cover the widest range of topics in terms of starting a YouTube or specifically a booktube channel that I can think of. So I will be doing videos on editing, on scheduling, on planning videos, um, talking in front of a camera, um, uploading your videos, getting involved in the community, sort of the whole life cycle of a YouTube channel if you like. We're starting today with the basics that you need before you can even start a channel which is a camera and, and equipment and we're going to be talking about the setup as well that I use for my own YouTube videos. So what I'll do is start by talking about my own framing, my equipment, the setup that I use and you can see it in action within this frame and then I'm going to take you on a behind the scenes tour of my setup and you can see the, the, around my bedroom basically and see the equipment that I'm using. Now it goes without saying that you do not need any fancy equipment at all to start a YouTube channel. Um, I can let you know what I use, but that doesn't mean that you have to use exactly what I do. To be honest, a lot of my equipment is very basic anyway. I certainly don't have a snazzy um, camera or lighting setup. You can use a webcam on your laptop to film a video. You can film videos on your iPhone. If you'd like to learn more about filming videos on your iPhone, my friend Jean did a very good video explaining how to use iMovie, and which again, I will link up in the corner here. But before I started my own booktube video, I watched a ton of videos like these and tutorials because the whole filming on a camera and editing thing. I mean, I'd never filmed or edited a video in my whole life. Most of us on this platform are amateurs. And even though I wasn't necessarily going to be diving in and buying loads of expensive equipment straight away, I think it's nice to have an idea of perhaps what you're aiming toward or what other people um, who you watch, what their setup is. So it kind of gives you a little bit of comfort right in the early days. So starting with the basics, which is the camera. I happened to already own a DSLR camera before I even thought of starting a YouTube channel so that's what I film on. I film using the Canon 600D and I just use the kit lens that it came with and I have not upgraded since then. This is the same camera that I've been using for the last two years. Most of my friends I think film on the 700D which is a more recent incarnation of the same camera um, and I think that is slightly better but I find this camera to be completely serviceable. One thing I will note about the quality of the images in my videos, I also use a process called color grading in editing. So the lighting and the color that you're getting as part of this video isn't solely due to my camera. I will do a video on editing later on in this series and um, where I'll explain all of that, but that's just, just a side note. One of the most important aspects of any YouTube video is the audio quality. I think that's number one priority in terms of things that you want to get right. It's not something that a lot of people think about and it's not something you think about yourself when you watch other people's videos. But the minute that a video is too quiet or the sound quality is a little bit off it really makes such a big difference for the first year i just filmed using the microphone that was embedded within this camera which you can hear here hi everyone it's lauren and i'm here with a book haul for you to the audio quality in my earlier videos is a lot more echoey and it has this kind of underlying hiss or interference that I don't get now because I use a microphone. The microphone that I am currently using is the Rode Mic Pro and this is fine. I got this for Christmas last year I think and it's okay. I don't think it's a great microphone. It cost about a hundred pounds um, and it did, it did definitely improve the audio quality of my videos compared to what they were before but I do get comments from time to time from viewers telling me that my videos are inaudible or they are very 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 quiet. I think that depends on the speaker settings that you have on the device that you're viewing this video on but still it means that I do have to try and increase the audio volume of my videos in editing afterwards which is just very irritating. I wish I had a camera microphone that worked properly. Moving on to lighting it's important to remember that you need lighting from multiple sources when you're filming a video. You need light on the subject which is me and I use a lamp which is on top of my camera and I bounce the light off of the wall in front of me and onto my face. The light is running out of batteries at the moment, so it's not as bright as it probably could be, but I use the wall to diffuse the light so it's not just a spotlight, um, so I don't look, get that rabbit in headlights look, which I think I had in some of my earlier videos when I was trying to film at night. I'm also using my ceiling light, which is lighting me from above, naturally, and I'm getting the benefit of my window, which is over there. Daylight is the best light. If, if you can use daylight, that is just the most natural look that you can get from your videos, but 
I did find when I used to sit in front of the window that you are a bit of a slave to the elements in the way that if a sun goes behind the clouds it changes the quality of lighting in your video and if you're editing your video after the fact and you're kind of changing colour because the light's changing that makes it very very frustrating in editing. Framing wise I am sitting in the centre of the screen at the moment at the edge of my bed. Normally because I have a booktube channel and I tend to hold books up or have pictures in this area here I tend to sit a little bit more off center, um, but this is where I'm sitting today. Like I said, I'm using the wall in front of me to bounce light into my face, and I've got my bed and my bookshelves quite far um, in the background of this shot. This is a relatively new setup for me. I used to film over in that corner with a bookcase behind me, but I felt that that was quite busy as a background. And what I really prefer about this background is that my bedroom is white and a lot of my color palette in the background is neutral. And I found it really works in terms of having contrast between the subject, which is me and the books and the background and I think it gives it a very light airy feel which is the kind of look and the kind of environment I wanted on my channel. Framing wise I'm not sitting too far away or too close to the camera in my own opinion. I try and use the rule of thirds um, in terms of the, the frame and I have my shoulders in the bottom third of the shot and my head in the top two thirds. This took a lot, a lot of practice, a lot of trial and error to find something that I felt worked for me. Oftentimes I will frame myself wonderfully and think this is a really great shot and then as I'm talking in the camera I'll lean forward or move around and I think I'm framed like this and then when I come to edit myself I'm actually like that which is very annoying, but like I said, you just get used to it. Some people film in front of their bookcases, which is fantastic. Some people film very close to the camera like this, and I think this can create a really nice intimate atmosphere if you've got quite a quiet voice or you're trying to have a bit more of a personal conversation, then I think this kind of framing can work really nicely. Some people sit really far back from the camera um, on their sofa with a cup of tea, and again, that's, that's equally lovely. I think you just need to find a style um, that suits you. There's no right way to do it. There's no right distance to be from the camera, really, as long as people can see and hear you. And you've got to work with the space that you have. Like most of us are filming in our houses and that doesn't give for a lot of options. So this is what I do with the space that I have. What I'm going to do now is give you a bit of a behind the scenes tour using this vlogging camera that I have. This is the Canon EOS M10, which I got last year when we went to Italy. And basically I just got it because it has this flip up screen, which is very, very handy for vlogging. A lot of the big famous vloggers use, I wanna say a GX7 or a G7X. I'll, you know, put it there, which is very, very expensive. I think it costs like five, six hundred pounds when I looked into it. This was about 350 pounds from memory, um, which which I thought was fine. And I'm really happy with the quality of the pictures in it. Um, I think this works really nicely and it's got an autofocus, which again is very handy for vlogging. Um, I'm very pleased with this camera and I can show you the difference in the quality of picture and sound. Now, so this is me talking on my vlogging camera. You should be able immediately to tell a difference between the audio quality between this camera and me talking on this microphone. One criticism that I have about this camera, which isn't necessarily the camera's fault, but that is that I don't know where the microphone is on this model. So when I move around with my hands, you get a lot of interference there, which is natural, I suppose. And perhaps I should get one of those holders, like a stick to hold it on. But generally, I think the quality of the image is very, very clear. And I think this is quite good value for money. As far as these kind of cameras go, I used to vlog um, on my iPhone almost exclusively and I felt the video quality that I got from that was completely fine. So now I'll give you a bit of a backstage view of what I see when I sit on my bed to do a video. So here we are, here's my camera look. So this is the Canon um, 600D. As I said, you can see me in the viewfinder there. It's often very difficult to look at yourself in the lens and not at yourself in the viewfinder, I find. Up here, you've got my uh, Rode Mic Pro and my light, as I said, which is bouncing off the wall. The light that I have there is this one, uh, which is an LED video lighting, apparently. This was very, very cheap. And, you know, I think the lighting quality shows, to be honest, it comes with two fit filters a warm filter and a cool filter and it's okay I think this is like 15 between 15 and 30 pounds it really wasn't expensive I'm going to link everything that I'm mentioning in my description box below and here is my tripod which again was definitely about 30 quid this was not expensive at all so this is me this is what I'm looking at uh, when I'm speaking to you now to give you a bit of a tour of my bedroom so you can see exactly what I'm working with here like I said this is generally just one big loud 
echoey box mainly because we don't have anything on this wall over here and we have some built-in wardrobes there i have my wardrobes open while i'm filming to try and deaden the echo as much as i can i also move all of the nonsense that we normally have in this corner like this bright red disgusting lamp and our bright green washing bag just because I really want to keep that neutral palette behind me when I'm filming. I don't want any bright colours in the background. So there are some other options if I wanted to film elsewhere in my bedroom. I could sit on my bed like this. This is what I used to do in my old flat and have the window in front of me and the natural light on my face. And that's actually really nice lighting. You can see that now that that works really well. Although you do have the problems that I've already spoken about with natural light that it is very changeable. But I kind of thought this background was a bit boring because if my wardrobe was closed you would just have white behind me and then the door which I didn't think was very nice. Um, this is where I used to film like this, uh, just crouching down next to my desk with my books behind me and again using the natural light from the window. But because of, I felt like this was quite dark behind me and there's nothing wrong with that. I, I really like this desk and I like the books behind it. I think it's very, very pretty, but I just felt like it wasn't really working, especially when I was making the thumbnails. I felt like everything was getting quite crowded in the shot. And so I am much happier with the setup that I have at the moment. So a little look there at what goes into the setup behind my videos. Like I say, everyone is completely different. And to be honest, it, it, you don't really know what equipment you're gonna need or what kind of background you wanna use until you start filming, until you start working out what you want your channel to be. Um, it, it's very hard to know what you might need. So I would not suggest going out and buying a load of stuff before you've even started doing a channel. But I hope this has enlightened some of you in terms of what goes on behind the scenes and the things that you kind of have to think about before starting filming. My best advice is really if you have a camera, which can be any camera, it can be a phone camera, it can be a laptop webcam, um, just start filming and then see if you like it and just get into it. There's no point spending a lot of money on equipment when you haven't even made a video yet and you don't know if you're going to enjoy um, putting videos out on this platform. Nothing has to be perfect first time, which is going to be like my ongoing motto throughout all of these videos that you just need to start really and and see where it takes you and just not worry the fact that you might not be at the best top most amazing quality for your first like first few videos my next video in this series is going to be all about planning your videos and that is going to encompass everything from getting ideas to what you're going to film getting motivation to film planning and scheduling when your videos are going to be filmed and when they're going to be uploaded hopefully all of that pre-prep stuff that you'll be thinking about before you actually sit down and turn the camera on. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please let me know in the comments if you did and if you have any other questions that you want me to answer. Like this video if you liked it and I will see you next time. Bye.